Hello guys, welcome to another episode. I'm so happy to have you once again in our channel. As I have told you guys in the previous episodes that the World Youth Festival is taking place in Sirius, uh, city of in Suchi, city of Russia, which thousands of people yearly come in here for touristic purposes and for Olympics and for many other purposes in this city. So right now we are going to have someone who came from Moscow and who is helping participants and people who are coming in this city. They, he helps them to find their ways. He, he is helping him to know where to go, how to find, and he also speaks English. So the people who are coming from the three countries are able to understand him. So let's welcome him. Hello. Hey. Hey, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Doing fine, always fine. Thank you so much for coming to our promotion. Yes. So, um, as I had a quick introduction with our viewers, I introduced that you came from Moscow and you're helping people uh, to find their ways. Like international people have a lot of issues, but you're helping them. At the same time, you know the English language. So, I would like to start off with a question. How is everything going on in this festival so far? Everything is going well. Uh, everything that we've done has been successful. We have a lot of We've had a lot of issues, a lot of challenges, actually, but we've been able to square them all away, and we're just we just decided to keep going. Yeah, because you know, keep keeping going is something that you have to do, like especially yeah. for the festival that lasts uh, from March first through March eighth. So that's why we have to like keep going, stay calm, keep you know, do everything in our power to get everything done. Uh, like so, I, I've had a couple of volunteers. Not volunteers, participants actually, mm -hmm. who actually lost their lag luggage, and oh. we're just doing everything that we can to actually, you know, get the luggage back from Turkey to, you know, Sochi. Mm -hmm. So this like this process is going to take a lot of time. It's very, you know, tedious, and it's going to take a lot of energy yes. and effort. But we're trying our best to do this. So yeah, everything is going well so far. Yeah, so you're helping people. How on why did you become a volunteer? Tell us about yourself. Sure. Like, so my volunteering journey started like five years ago when I joined a community based organization. So now I'm an activist uh, within Emil University and I'm looking to continue my volunteering journey. So, volunteering actually is something that is very beneficial to me. So, mm -hmm. uh, it helped me improve my social skills. Yeah. and become a better better communicator and improve my language skills as well, obviously English. Yes. yes. Uh, and so with this festival, I wanted to, to try something different. I'm explore, exploring my options here. I want to go international somewhat. So I'm just looking to see more international participants. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm just, I decided to become a volunteer for the World Youth Festival 2024. Because uh, yeah, we have... 10,000 foreigners, mm -hmm. 10,000 foreigners. Yeah. Some of them don't speak, don't speak Russian. Yes. Most of them speak English. Yeah, yeah. So you can practice your language skills, I always say. So I decided to volunteer, not to participate, but to volunteer specifically. Yes. So that's yeah. why I decided to do this. So currently I'm a attache, so-called attache for Indonesia. So I, I actually accompany the Indonesians here for the festival. Mm -hmm. So And I, I've been enjoying this uh, type of activity so far. What is an attaché, like for the people who don't know? Yeah, okay. What so, attaché is a French word. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a loan word, actually. So, it means someone who is attached to something. Mm -hmm. So, an attaché, obviously, this, this word is not commonly used. So, this part of nomenclature is something that is related to diplomacy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you can be a part of the embassy or diplomatic mission. And you can be an attaché, attaché within it, right? Yes. So you accompany the delegates or the other uh, foreigners in your country. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this is how it works here. Yeah. So you are helping the people from Indonesia. Yes. How many people came from Indonesia? How many? So so far, one hundred and fifty. Yeah. That's a good number. But so my delegation is only fourteen people. Actually, sixteen, but two of them were not able to make it to Sochi mm -hmm. because of what COVID and many other restrictions. So you yourself have a delegation. Yes. At the same time, you are attached to the people of uh, Indonesia. Indonesia, yes. And at the same time, you're helping anyone who is coming. Sure, sure. Because, you know, when you wear this uniform, 
people assume that you know everything, right? Yeah. And so they just come up to you and ask for any type of advice, any type of information. So you have to do it because otherwise you're not going to represent uh, yeah. the festival, right? In Russia, obviously. Yes. Russia in general, Russia per se. So that's why it's very important to know everything and to not and not to misrepresent Russia. Yeah, yeah. So we have to represent Russia in the best light possible, right? Yes. Because we're Russian citizen, c- citizens, at, at least me, right? Mm-hmm. And I have to represent my country in the best way possible. So yes. that's why I'm doing everything. You're doing a great job. How, how studying at university, how your degree has helped you to be good in your, what you are so, doing? So right? uh, my major is international law. So even sure. though volunteering is not related to like international commercial arbitration or legal uh, advising or many other activities that are related to law, it's still a good winning line to a CV. That's a great thing for, to have on your resume, especially when you're a student, because yeah. it counts as, a, as experience. And, you know, experience is awesome because you have references, you have like the dates and you have like a buzzword. Mm-hmm. World Youth Festival. Like, yeah. That's a huge international event. Yes. So that's yes. perfect for your resume. So that's obviously winning like uh, on your on your CV. Yeah. And so yeah, employers are going to be like, impressed. They will be impressed. Yeah, for sure. I heard that the volunteers started to help and started to come in here earlier. So yes. when did you come and how was the experience? So, what you had, what you guys did? Like you come here. Okay. So since I'm from Moscow, we left Moscow on. February 22nd, mm-hmm. actual. So we took a train. So we rode a train to Sochi, to Adler, actually. Mm-hmm. So Adler is uh, right next to Sirius, for those who don't know. Okay. So Al- Alder, Alder. Adler, Alder. Adler. That's Alder. the main, what, what is, is that the city? Or okay, the... so I'm going to tell you about the administration, administrative divisions of the Sochi. C- yes, I would be. So we got the city of Sochi, which is a part of Krasnodar Dark Krai. Krasnodar Krai is one of the subjects of the Russian Federation, mm-hmm. and Sochi is a city, is a it's an urban uh, district okrug in Russia. Okay. okay. So, and within that okrug, we have three districts. I see. So, Wazrovsky district, which is up north, we have the central micro district, which is like if it's in downtown Sochi, mm-hmm. and then we have uh, Adler the district. Yeah, I see. So Adler District consists of the city of Adler and the federal territory of Sirius. I see. Yeah, I see. And now we're in Sirius. Mm-hmm. We are in Sirius right yes. now. Yes. Uh, so you said you came from Moscow and then uh, what? To the- Adler, and then we took a took a bus to Sirius. And so that's how we ended up here. The ride took us two hours, uh, n- n- not two hours. Jesus, and that's wishful thinking. I was. Yeah. Two days. Two days. From Two days. Moscow. So yeah, we made it to Sirius on February twenty fourth in the morning. So wow. yeah, we had a lot of things to do, like accommodation, like checking into hotel, uh, and obviously getting like accreditation badges, mm-hmm. and many other things, like training sessions, obviously, so that we can actually prepare yes. better for everything. Yep, yep. And yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of like our. Travel. You guys have yeah. some uh, training as well when you. Yeah, so obviously you have to prepare. Uh, to represent Russia in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah. I have an interesting question. What What was the challenging thing that you come across in this program so far for yourself or well, for the people? Something really challenging. Yeah, obtaining information. This one is like the most complicated thing ever. This say, this is an actual challenge mm-hmm. because we have like thousands, if not tens of thousands of people, and sometimes you know we have conflicting information or. Yeah. You know, something that is contradicting. Yes. So you have to double check everything yep. and wait like an hour or two before you can actually confirm the validity, mm-hmm. the validity of information mm-hmm. so that you don't do anything like wrong. Yep. Because like in the morning, they can say that you, you, you got to take the PCR test like in this bill, right? But in two hours, they're going to say that, no, you cannot take take the PCR test in this building, you have to go to the airports yes. or, you know, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the memos, they change. So this is why it's very important to, you know, to stay in touch mm-hmm. reality, to yeah. follow everything, to, you know, make sure that you have all the contacts contacts on your phone, mm-hmm. just in case, so that you guys should re- reach out to your supervisor, to your 
team leader, mm -hmm. so-called team leader. Yeah. And so this way you can confirm everything. Especially this works for delegations because when you have like a delegation of 15 people, you have to have the most accurate information mm -hmm. as it can get. Yeah. Any mistake could put all the 50 people sure. there in a, a read in a loop. We could say. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be a huge burden. Yeah. There, that's why. So, so far it's the second day of the event and we still have another five days. Yes. Uh, so many people understand where, where is, what is, and they have the plan ready, right? Yes. How do you expect the other five days? Five days. Uh, so I think, so we've had first two days, like initial two days. So the first day is, uh, was the opening ceremony and the second day was the opening ceremony, cer ceremony as well. And, you know, the next five days are going to be different, I think, because we're going to have the main pro type of program, the main program here, like main events, like scientists from all over the country. They're going to represent all their ideas, all their inventions, designs and concepts. We're going to have like the best engineers, uh, singers as well, obviously dancers, pretty much everything. We're just going to have everything here. And we're probably going to connect more with the delegations uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. Like, so Indonesia can connect with uh, North Korea or the U.S. can connect with, with Russia more. Because uh, I, I have this button here. So this one supports the U.S.-Russia friendship. Oh. So I got this one from, the, from one of the U.S. delegates today. Yeah. So, so we have received the U.S. delegates. Well. Yes, thirteen delegates. Yeah. Wow, I would be happy to meet them. Actually, okay. Yeah, you're delegates. probably gonna meet them. You got yeah. five more days, so you're. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think some, maybe some other delegates are still on the way to them. Sure, sure. sure. So, my delegates, they have all made it to Sochi, but some delegations, they don't have like the full, you know, roster. I heard some here in Wiki. I uh, Wiki is the like popular. Facebook version in Russia, we would say. Uh, so I, I, I read somewhere that someone was saying that I lost my luggage or, yes. uh, and also there was someone who was not able to come and he was writing a lot in Wiki. And I, try, I replied to him, I hope you find whatever you lost. So I hope he finds that if yes. issues arise. So if a person loses their luggage, baggage, uh, they have to reach out to their attaché. And the attaché is going to take care of every single part of log logistics here mm -hmm. because the logistics here is so a multifaceted that you have to like do like reach out to like multiple people at the same time yeah like you have to reach out to the airport you actually made it to right you know sochi airport then you have to reach out to one of the airport airports where you made a transfer like mm -hmm. uh turkey you know an airport in turkey mm -hmm. uh what else you have to reach out to the airport where you actually took off so it may be in Indonesia. I see. So we have to reach out to multiple airports, several people, so that you have all this like established, right? Mm -hmm. Because you never know where the luggage is going to end up. Yeah. It could be in Indonesia. It could be in Turkey. It could be in you know Adler. Yeah. Nobody knows. So we have to reach out to multiple people. Yeah, particularly when there are transitions from one to another, and if you yes. go to another country, exactly. That's, that that could be. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 So, like, you meet different people, and um, how is your perspective about people you have met? Like, so um, obviously you have stereotypes, because you know I think stereotypes happen because we don't have exposure. Yep. So, yes. That's so right. we don't we don't see people in person. All we see is books or you know memes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. So, and when you see the memes, you probably you probably have this like distorted understanding of like certain people. Yeah. Like maybe you think that Egyptians are weird or something, but then you, you know, then you see them in person and it turns out that Egyptians are, you know, perfectly fine. Yeah. They're awesome people, very nice people. Yes. So, um, yeah, same applies to Indonesians, I don't know, Japanese maybe, okay. and many other people, Americans as well. Yeah. Americans, I think, is like the best, the prime example here, because we oftentimes think of the, Amer think of Americans as like evil, <laughs> capitalists. I mean, cap there is nothing wrong with capitalism, almost, actually. But, you know, you know, spreading, you know, bad ideas, uh, inciting, wreaking havoc yep. on, you know, many nations. Yep. But, you know, average Americans or ordinary Americans, like American citizens, per se, they are just regular people. 
They're just stuff just like us. So that stereotypes like disappears once you meet them. Yes. In person. And this is, this event is one of the examples that we yes. would kind of remove or see the people where we don't we, we are going to delete those stereotypes from our brain, which is happening right now. Yes. Uh, many people have stereotypes about each other, about each country. And the moment they see and live with them and get in contact. They go back and then they say, no, that is wrong. That is not that was, what I that, thought. Yeah. This is why we'll live like 70 years or 80 years. So maybe in your first 20 years, you have this type, type of idea or understanding of, you know, Egyptians or, you know, English people. Like, yes. Yeah. Britain or, British. British. No, no. What do you call them? Britons. Maybe. Yeah. The British people. Uh, what do they yeah. say? Yeah. Or Americans, um, for that matter. So, and then you have like, you have it changed, yep. you know, it just changes into something else, mm -hmm. morphs into something else. And I wish that more people could attend uh, mm -hmm. this like type of festival. But obviously this festival is going to take place like quadrennial-y. Uh, which like each five yeah. years? Four years. Each four years. Yes. This so, is going to happen. Yeah, every, every four years, the festival is going to take place. So right now it's 2024, it's doing to be in 2028 or yeah, 2029. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was trying my best to, to make it to make it back here. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah, that awesome. would be amazing. Probably as a volunteer or as a yeah. whatever kind of to be helpful for the people. Sure. Uh, so tell us, Arthur, tell us about like your general life or activity back in Moscow. Like how do you spend your days? So there? I'm a student. I live in, in a dorm. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I usually do is like wake up at 7 a.m. And then go to go to college, go to university, go to class. After class, I usually go go do extracurricular activities, like doing the paperwork for events. Mm -hmm. So we have to get the clearance for the events uh, within university. So we get all the clearance here, then we organize the events, like speaking clubs in English. So one of the things that I do as my extracurricular activity is uh, the Angle Saxon Club. Mm -hmm. So we study. The culture, the language uh, of the English-speaking nations, countries, yeah. uh, so like the U.S., Canada, Australia, U.K., uh, you name it, right? In yes. New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand, yep. yeah, yeah, yep. So we got the, these English-speaking countries, and so we just study the politics, the culture, the language of these like countries, mm -hmm. because obviously in English, it, you know, in England you have different type of English, right? In America you have a different type of English. Yeah, that, that's so true. You have several varieties, and the culture is going to be different. Obviously, the cuisine is going to be different because for Thanksgiving, yep. Americans have like casserole and many other things. Uh, in the UK, they have what they love curry. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. India, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Like you have a lot of connections here, and so this is something that you have to study. So we're studying it, and we're doing you know speaking clubs. So speaking clubs take place biweekly, so mm -hmm. once every two weeks, and so we have to do everything we can to organize it properly. So we usually have like 15 people. So that's our attendance good. is... good number. Yeah, it's 15 people. So for 15 people, you have to, you know, find a better host, uh, a good host that is able to, you know, have everyone engaged, involved in this. And so we have a native speaker of American English uh, as a host. So she is a fourth year uh, international law student, actually, at Gimo. So she's a host. And she hosts every single speaking club session. That's amazing. And people are just so amazed that we have so many resources on campus. Yep. That they attend, you know, our events and many other events. And they're just, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just, it's just crazy, right? That you have like Americans on campus, especially like considering the, the times we live in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy. Um, when I applied to HEC University, one of the instructors who was, taking interview for me. He was an American. I was surprised. And uh, oh, yeah. I was so happy at the same time. But I didn't expect that. I thought maybe the interview is going to be in English for sure, but uh, probably Russian speakers. But when I met him, when, I, when we get to know each other, so far, wow, that's completely interesting and different from what, yeah, yeah something, something people don't, also don't usually think about. They yeah. always think that, okay, inside it's all, all in one minded and one people sort of stuff. Yeah. So you came in here and you are helping as a volunteer and helping yes. uh, delegates and people from different countries. And what is your future plan? Like, uh, 
Do you also plan to participate for some other activities like sure. where? Uh, so any international events, I'm down with that. I'm going to take part in any any event that is international, especially if it's huge, like yes. huge international events. So anything that you know. So if life gives you lemons, you have to you have to make lemonade, right? Yes. So you have to like jump for every single opportunity that you have, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have like the world world youth festival, you have to apply, right? Apply. No matter what, you may be rejected. You may be like, well, yeah, that experience. But you no, know, who knows? Maybe you can get in, right? No, you you can actually get in, right? So because ten thousand people actually got in, so yeah, you have to like apply, 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 work harder, and you're probably going to achieve your goals here. So in terms of my future plans after the festival, I'm looking to continue studying, like you know, focus the studies, like you know, do international commercial arbitration, obviously. Find, a, find an internship so that I can have something more on my, on my resume, like head it up. Mm -hmm. And after that, I'm looking to, you know, find, you know, more academic options. So I'm currently exploring academic options, like study abroad or keep, you know, keep studying in Russia for masters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll see. We'll see about that. I'm currently doing research. So, but it's very tentative. So I cannot actually say like 100% that I'm going to study abroad. Mm -hmm. or to stay in Russia. We'll see. We'll see about that. Yes. So yeah. we have to, like, it's going to take some time. Yeah, it's going to always, you know, that's a plan for the future. Yes. Yeah. There's good something that I cannot divulge, divulge right now. Yeah. yeah. A good plan requires a good time and the planning, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Future. That's so uh, but for sure, I think, I believe that every city could have some sort of issues. Like, yes. we can't be so much perfect, like 100%. Yes. Like, so it's always we, getting better. We, yeah. we can get better. You know? As long as you enjoy, like, having four seasons, like winter, uh, spring, summer, and fall, you're welcome. You can you can move it, move into Moscow because we have like traditional values. Mm. We're pretty conservative in terms of marriage, uh, transition, drugs, and many other like issues. Mm -hmm. Religion, obviously. Mm -hmm. So Russia is a very Christian country, even though we have Muslims and many other you know religious affiliations here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Russia is still based on the Christian, Orthodox Christian values. And so these values, Judeo-Christian Judeo values, mm. are very important in terms of marriage, transition, and many other things, and drugs, obviously. Right. So in terms of marriage, we have, we're very conservative. So you cannot marry a man if you're a man. You cannot marry a woman if you're a woman, right? I myself am, am a Catholic, Catholic Christian, and I find myself, you know, and I find, you know, these policies to be the best policies yeah. ever. Because like in the EU or in the US, you have very liberal. Yeah, it's open. Yeah, open liberal, to, liberal so policies. Open for anything which comes forward. Yeah, which is kind of hurting the economy and the people in general. Because in the US, they force uh, children and their parents to agree to having their child transition at the age of five, which is crazy. Yeah. And indoctrination happens all the time. So there's like a critical race theory what else like uh, transitioning, saying that homosexual you know relations are okay. I mean, I don't care who you sleep with, who you sleep with, but as long as you don't like you know promote it yep. in a horrible way, like you know I'm doing protests, you know living you know going out to streets in streets like naked with all this like weird type of, type of thing like type of accessories here. Mm -hmm. You, you get, you get, yeah, you yeah. Go right. yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, so if international people come in here and if you meet them, it's the very first day, right? Like said, you missed the first day I came in here, you met me. What do you suggest me to do in this city particularly or in your city? Okay, serious. Yeah. So in serious, in serious. Uh, this obviously you have to like check in. So you have to find accommodation. So serious is a unique place because people don't usually live here. Sirius used to be a site for Olymp for the Olympics, 2014 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And we only have hotels here, like, you know, British Resort Hotel, uh, Barkhut Nisi Zoning Hotel. This is where we are right now. Yep. Yes. And obviously we may have some apartments, but you have to find some accommod accommodation. So after you have that done, you can find like transportation. You can rent a car or decide to use public transportation like buses and shuttle buses, especially for the World Youth, youth Festival, right? Mm -hmm. So use public buses because this is a very efficient way to get around the city 
you know, inside of the city. But if you want to get on a train to get to the other parts of the Sochi district, you have to take a train, right? Take yeah. a train. Like to the central district, to cross the Apoliana, which mm -hmm. is like the mountainous area, mm -hmm. is going to be much faster and much cheaper. Than because nice. like on a bus is going to be like 200 rubles, which is $2. And on train is going to be like 50 rubles or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, very, very cheap. Like mm -hmm. just under a dollar. Mm -hmm. Even less, like 50 cents. That is really Yeah, really which is insane, really right? So take a train, take a bus, ride a bus. Where they get... should meet the first, where they should visit first? Like, ah, in serious? In, in serious. So uh, you can obviously see the, you know, the heritage of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Like the Fisht Stadium, mm -hmm. which is in the western part of the city. So we can see that. Uh, what else can you see? You can, act, you can actually like walk around that district, like the Olympic district, yes. it's so-called Olympic district. So this way you can actually see everything. After that, you can like travel across uh, the city itself, like serious per se, mm -hmm. right? So what, what you can actually do is like take a scooter, e-scooter, rent, rent an e-scooter and ride around the city. It's so, it's so small that you can actually do it in like 40 minutes or so. And, and it's you're gonna, beautiful when you yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to see every nook and cranny of the city. And it's going to be beautiful. And awesome. Because here, we don't have seasons pretty much. We have like a rainy season and like the sunny season. Give it. It's so cheap. It's serious. Well, when is the rainy season? When is the rain? So the sun. Now, you know, so February, March is supposed to be a rainy season. But we don't have any rain, rainy, you know, any rains for some reason. It's kind of crazy. Maybe for the festival, I don't know. The festival <laughs> decided happened. to bless us with the sunny weather here. I saw okay. more sun uh, in yeah. these last days. But obviously it rains even in the summer, like in June and July, so we have the floodings. Mm. It's serious. So there's I've, yeah, I've been here. Water. Yeah, I've been here several times, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Like, the climate here is insane, but it's perfect for those who love, you know, sun. I love sun. Yeah, vitamin D, obviously, so that you don't have, like, seasonal depression. And many other like benefits. Of and, the sun. You say it's hard, or it's there are so many hotels and resorts and yes. stuff. Um, so where people could find a place to, if, if they want to rent an apartment for a month, for example, right. they are here for a month. So um, actually, this is not something that I know of, but you can actually rent an apartment here, like in the in this hotel. Uh, in these, these, yeah. So you're gonna be having a long term rent, yeah. rent of the apartment, right? Yeah. So your, you know, room is going to be a rental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you rent it for like six months or so, and that's perfect. Yeah. Because it's cheaper, I think. I so, haven't yeah. checked the prices because... Yeah. The, the, the yeah, we got it for free. Yeah. The, yeah. the program is paying for that. Yeah. For the record, the program is paying for everything. Transportation, accommodation, what else? Food as well. And yeah, that's it. Everything yes. you need. Yeah. It's most covered. of cards, the clues. And the, yeah, accreditation, uh, many other and like tools. Yeah, but yeah. so beneficial. Yeah, and you, uh, I like it because uh, some people also brought some gifts from uh, another country or from their own country, like people who are living in Russia. I it, uh, I received a message from a Russian friend, and she said that I have some friends, some gifts for you. Where are you? I should give you also for perfect. So yeah. I, I so give so the festival is all about connecting. You have to give presents. You have to give gifts. Gifts, one of the best like words in, in the English language. Yeah. Yeah. So you love gifts. We all love gifts, right? When we receive them, when we give them. So you have to do that, obviously, so that you can connect with the other countries. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up in one of the countries yep. uh, you connected with. Yep. So I'm probably going to end up in Indonesia, right? So I, I have a company, the delegation. Yeah. I'm still a company, and so I'm I can connect with the heads of the delegation, with the heads of the national preparatory committee. Yes. And do many things like end up in Java, for example, or Jakarta. Yeah, please. yeah, which is crazy. So, if you if you say in a few sentences, what would you like to say to the world about some outside All right. Russia? All right, guys. Uh, remember that Russia loves you. As long as you support uh, the Russian values, you're going to be welcome here. Welcome here, and make sure to not blame Russia for the things that Russia hasn't done. So you can actually use, like, listen to the, to the Western propaganda and to the Western media outlets, news outlets, and you're going to get misinformation. You have to have two perspectives. 
I believe that things will change for sure. Nothing remains the same in no country, no yes. century. Everything was changing up and down. And yes, uh, you know, we have seen the history. We have read the history, and now, now right now, we somehow experience the history. Yes, every one of us from a uh, different part of the world, but still, we know something. So yeah, with that, uh, I don't have any other question. Thank you okay. so much to be well, with us. But to will help. Yeah, yeah, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.